Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question we are asking is what's in the box? I'm going to be taking a look at the new Tales from the Loop starter set from Free League Publishing. This is based on the popular Steinman Stalinhog Tales from the Loop art books, as well as the Tales from the Loop role-playing game, and as this now indicates, the Amazon TV series. Though this came out before the Amazon TV series, they had to stick this over the shrink wrap. So we're going to take a look at this Tales from the Loop box. Before we do that, I just want to point you towards tabletopbellhop.com. That is my main webpage. That's where we put all of our gaming content, including things like these unboxing videos, actual plays, as well as questions, people answers to gaming and game night questions that people have sent with us, reviews and other stuff like that. So head over to tabletopbellhop.com to check that out. And be sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you'd like to, ding that bell. That way you won't miss any of our future videos. So first off, I'm going to crack this open. Um, note that this um, is a new box set for the system. The system has been out for a while. They want to point out it's won a number of NEs. I have played Tales from the Loop. I have not run it. I do own the full thing, but I am a, I, I love RPG box sets. I, I have a soft spot for them ever since discovering the TSR Marvel Super Heroes Yellow Box back in like 1985. I love RPG box sets and I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, if you head over to tabletopbellhop.com, I've got reviews of a few different RPG box sets and I'll be sure to do one for this once I get it open. And red. So we're just going to start by cracking this open by cutting the shrink wrap. I will say... This is very light. It is not a heavy box set. All right, so here we have Tales from the Loop, role-playing in the 80s that never was, obviously inspired by the popularity of TV shows like Stranger Things, as well as Simon Solon Hugs art. I gotta say, this does not draw me in. A big box of text at the bottom, though I gotta admit, seeing any awards and all those awards is tempting, but it is a little misleading, because that's not this box set that won, that's the full RPG. So again, fairly light box. All right, so right off the bat, you have the ever-popular silicon gel pack, which actually, if you live anywhere that's humid, keep this in the box. It'll keep your stuff from possibly getting ruined from humidity. We're going to jump right to the game catalog. So Freely Publishing puts out a number of games, a number of RPGs, some that I am very curious about, and a very popular new one that came out just in 2020 is the Alien RPG. So this is a catalog of the rest of their games. Forbidden Land sounds fantastic. My friend Phil Vecchi has been playing that and talking about it. An ad for this box set, and so on. Typical advertisement, that's fine. It's worth noting, they also do board games. Then we have Custom D6s. So Tales from the Loop is a D6-based dice pool system. Uh, these are a unique color, but the important thing on these is that sixes are what you're looking for. So they have a unique symbol of the loop on there. For something so the loop is kind of like the, the large hadron collider uh, and is a huge part about the setting and once they started running the loop strange things started to happen these dice have a very i don't know how to describe it unique texture they're they're not as smooth as most dice feel like like they're not shiny and smooth very clear to read um they all have the loop around them and again the sixes are, are hits so let's see how good these dice roll we got one, two hits. That's terrible for that many dice. So hopefully when I'm actually playing, they roll a little bit better than that. So we got a handful. How many dice do we have here? Six, ten dice? Yes, yeah, so ten custom D6s with um, a, the, the loop symbol replacing the six. Always a fan of getting more dice. Uh, normal D6s would work, but that's a nice touch. Up next, we have a very old-school newspaper-looking map. Um, showing the loop, as well as, oh, interesting. So, one of the things I do know about Tales from the Loop is there are two settings. It is a, as Free League Publishing is a Swedish company, and the default setting is uh, in Sweden. And here we have the Swedish setting, the, the Marlin facility map of the loop, showing where the loop is and all the different effects. And then we have... Boulder City, which is a uh, a fake U.S. city. So you have the main reactor and everything else. I got to say, I dig the the look of this. It has a it has a. I went to the um, the corner store and bought a map look to it. So there we have the loop in the U.S. and the loop in Sweden. 
I dig it. I, I like the, the, the feel of this, the look of this. It's got that old school 80s look. Then we have what looks like our first player character or kids. So the thing that's worth noting in this too is you can play kids. Or you can, you do play kids. Um, and again, it's set in the 80s that never was. One of the important rules in this game is none of the kids can actually die. Which is very important to some people playing games because no one wants to play a game about hurting and, and killing kids, right? So one of the rules in Tales from the Loop is that can't happen. So we start off with Maria, Kelly, and Anne. This is tightly packed. I'm having a hard time getting this out. Uh, just two provided. Nice, simple character sheet. Some background on one side. Rules on the other side. Um, I'm going to hold this up so you can hopefully see some of that. We'll get anywhere closer. It's got a nice handwritten style. Looks like it's been filled out already. Um, includes your attributes, conditions, your various skills, numbers already filled in. And the, the basic system for Tales of the Loop is you're going to have your attribute, you're going to add your skill, you're going to take that many dice, you're going to roll and count how many sixes you've got. So there's uh, different archetypes. So Maria is the popular kid. There's a bunch of different relationships. That's one of the ways that instead of actually getting hurt, because like I said, you, can, you can't um, die in this game, but you can have these things happen. You can become upset. Um... You can be scared, you can be exhausted, you can be injured, and you can be broken are the, are the different statuses. And one of the ways to get fixed in this game is to go to your contacts. So you do things like go home to your parents. Next we have, to, okay, I'm going to dump this this way because getting these out the way I'm doing it isn't working. So next we have Tim or Timmy. Timmy is the weirdo. Again, not a lot of info. I'm not going to hold that up so you can see it closer. Then we have Frederick, or Chad. He is the, the jock. Next, Isabella, or Patricia. I'm assuming this is probably the, um, the Swedish and the, the Americanized name. Um, one thing to note, this is a starter set, right? A beginner box. This is what a full Tales from the Loop character sheet looks like. Every time I play Tales from the Loop, they look like this. So it doesn't look like it's simplified in any way. At least as far as details on the characters. Uh, then we have Linda or Aaron, who is the bookworm. So it looks like no techie in this particular set compared to one of the character classes. Oh, I dig this look. Like, that looks like something from the 80s, like a, a, a bureau pamphlet, right? So we have the rules for Tales from the Loop. Wow, bright orange. Okay, hopefully it doesn't stick to bright orange with white text. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you there. So we have an introduction to the loop. Text a little small. I would have liked it a little larger. Uh, what is role playing? How the dice work? What Tales from the Loop is? I love the artwork, of course, which just makes sense. Of course, an advertisement for the full core rules, uh, which is a significantly thick rule book. Lots of artwork. Wow. Oh yeah, there we go. There's some text. Um, some interesting points at the bottom. A way to break it out instead of sidebars. Things are at the bottom, so there's footnotes. Definitely got the 80s going on there with the Commodore 64. And an 8-track mixtape. A lot of text. There, there is a lot of text in here. Again, this does not look like a simplified version of Tales from the Loop. So this is probably Simon Stallenhog's most famous Tales from the Loop picture. It's the one I've seen the most often. With the kid controlling the robot somehow. With, uh, with some kind of backpack. And one of the most important items to every kid in the 80s, the bike. Yeah, this does not look like a simplified version of Tales from the Loop, from what I've seen. Um, list of the different skills. Definitely a much smaller book. So we are looking at a total of 32 pages in the rules. And then what we should have here is an adventure. It says, The Recycled Boy for the Game Master Only. So, I don't want to spoil too much for this. So I'm going to flip through this one a little quicker. Uh, we got info. We got some sidebars. We got the maps. And it looks like you can do it in either setting. It's a nice touch. I do like this, that obviously... Bonus points right here, without spoiling anything. Oh, I lost the page. Look, it's not quite a linear story. That's nice to see for an intro set. Most intro sets just have a straight line. Looks like there is some, some non-linear storytelling going on, which is awesome. Again, I'm not going to, I don't want to give away too much. So we're going to really flip through this quick. Some art on the back. The adventure is 16 pages long. And that's it. That's all you get. Um, pretty much what I expected. Uh, I love the look. The aesthetic's awesome. That That is so bare bones in 80s.
The only thing that seems to be missing on this is a coffee stain. It should be like a coffee stain right there. Uh, character sheets, I'm surprised to see, do not seem to be simplified or dumbed down in any way for this intro set. These are full Tales from the Loop characters. Um, what I didn't count was five of them. Is that correct? Yeah, it looks like five characters. I didn't count them as I was going through. So five characters. Rather cool map. Though very zoomed out, so I don't know how useful this is during play. Um, at least here you have some zoom in on Border City. On the Swedish side, though, like, there's nothing. Custom dice. Dig it. Always like custom dice. A couple silicon packs and a catalog. I will say one minor complaint. That's an awful lot of wasted space. This could have been half the width. Now, I don't know if this is a standard box size, perhaps, and that's why they went with it, but this could have been a little skinnier without wasting anything. So there you have the Tales from the Loop starter set from Free League Publishing. I'm um, looking forward to checking this out. I'm a big fan. As a player, have played Tales from the Loop. I played under the awesome Angela Murray as well as Ted Flanagan at various conventions and had a fantastic time really looking into diving into this game from the DM side of things. And yes, I own the core rule book, but you know what? That's a big intimidating book. This looks much more easy to digest. Plus, I love beginner boxes. I love RPG boxes. That's the other thing that's nice to see. That is a nice, thick, solid box. That's not going to get crushed by my other games. It's not going to get ruined on my shelf. That's going to keep what's in here, the contents, protected. Um, what will be nice to see, I'll have to test this theory to see if the core rulebook will fit inside this. Because if it will, I'll just put everything on my shelf like this, which would be awesome. So again, Free League Publishing, Tales from the Loop, uh, role-playing in the 80s that never was. Something I didn't think I'd enjoy playing a child in the 80s. I was a child in the 80s. I didn't know if I wanted to go back to that, but I had a ton of fun playing in this setting. I am really looking forward to checking this out. Eventually, you'll be able to find a review on my blog at tabletopbellhop.com. That's it for me. Again, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.